It's time for a little comedy, a little content, and a lot of conversation. It's the Gino Jones Show, exclusively right here on YouTube. Now, here's your host, Gino Jones. Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's showtime. It is Gino Jones Showtime. And it's a Tuesday. What's happening, everybody? How we doing? So I'm coming to you live Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Yesterday was a special day. It was Daddy-Daughter Day with my baby girl, Alec Jones. No, but otherwise, I come to you live Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. if you're in Chicago, 3.30 p.m. if you're out on the West Coast, please subscribe to the Gino Jones channel. I'm just looking at something on my screen here. Please subscribe to the Gino Jones Show the Gino Jones channel right here on YouTube. Please subscribe, share, like, and binge watch all my back episodes. Uh, my guest is South Carolina State Representative Crystal Matthews. She is running to be the next United States Senator here from the great state of South Carolina to get rid of Mr. Tim Scott, Mr. Cotton to Congress. So let me start off. It's a short monologue, which is related to my guest, and why she's on the show today. So shout out to the NBA. Man, they're doing something really cool. So the NBA is not playing on election day. Election day is 83 days from today. So on November 8th, which is a Tuesday, there will be no NBA basketball, none. But there will be NBA games the day before, Monday. November 7th. Now, why is the NBA doing this? Well, they said because uh, they want to encourage civic engagement. They want to encourage everyone to vote and they don't want to be a distraction. They don't want anybody having to worry about going to see a basketball game or even watching a game. They want you to be focused on civic engagement. That's though their words. I'm quoting them and they want to encourage everybody to vote. Now, if you remember back in 2020, a, uh, a lot of the NBA teams opened up their basketball, their arenas, and they were used as places to vote, voting uh, poll locations. So shout out to uh, Commissioner Adam Silver. Shout out to all the NBA owners and the NBA players, because the players and the owners, you know, they had to come to the uh, players union along with the owners had to come together and the league and decide to do this. So shout out to the NBA all about civic engagement, all about advancing the culture and doing the right thing. Now, as a matter of fact, so did you know uh, on November 8th, all 435 Un United States House seats are going to be up for grabs, along with over 30 United States Senate seats, including one of the Senate seats right here, like I said, in the state of South Carolina. And the, young, the woman that's about to come on camera is running for one of those seats, like I said, to um, to go ahead and we're going to help Mr. Scott find a new line of work. We're going to send him on, on a permanent vacation. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a South Carolina state representative. She is a friend of the show. She is part of the Geno Jones family. Uh, this is a permanent home for her. You've seen her on the show, and she is back. She's gotten past the her primary is now general election, November 8th, representing uh, the Democratic Party here in South Carolina. I'm going to speak it into existence, as my grandmother said. Name it and claim it, Jeannie. Speak it into existence, our next United States senator from the great state of South Carolina, Representative Crystal Matthews. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, Gino. How are you today? Uh, well, the question, I'm always better when I have you on the show as a guest. I'm excited. <laughs> like we uh, I just mentioned, 83 days until Election Day. But actually, um, people will be able to vote before that here in South Carolina. So I just want to I want to pass you the mic and you can segue any way in any way you want to go uh, since we were talking about Election Day. But I do know. Uh, election day here there will be some early voting if you want to speak to that feel free to we have to, we have a couple weeks of early voting before november 8th um we want to make sure that people uh, are taking advantage of that as much as possible we will definitely be putting out more information on my matthews for senate page on facebook twitter and instagram making sure folks know what they need to take what the dates are what the times are what the deadlines are we're going to make sure that you have everything that you need to vote now, Gino. 
let's talk about the Inflation Reduction Act. Yes. Yes. I listen. This is a substantial piece of legislation um, that has now been signed into law today. And uh, I am proud to be a Democrat today. I am proud to say that um, we have made a substantial uh, change in climate, inflation, taxes, medical care. I mean, we haven't done that in I don't know how long. So I am uber excited to kind of get into it. And I kind of want to break the pieces down. I took some notes and I want to break the pieces down for you with what people, what the rumors are versus what is fact? Yes, feel um, free. We, we get out. Okay, okay. All right. So the first thing, um, first rumor, um, is that it will raise taxes on small businesses and working families. That is not true. Uh, it will not raise taxes on the vast majority of small businesses or working families. It actually invests in them. So um, it only increases on businesses that make over four hundred thousand dollars a year. So it's roughly 98% of all, all Americans like are underneath that. Most of us working people don't make $400,000 plus a year as a business, as a small business. And so that is what, what it will affect as far as we talk about uh, taxes, right? Um, the second thing is it increases a crucial small business tax credit. So it used to be 250,000 and it raises that that tax credit for small businesses to 500,000. That credit can be applied against payroll taxes and a wide variety of expenses including product development and technology. So that is key because there are a lot of businesses that can't afford to get up to date with some of the technology and, and when you're talking about spending money to make money that definitely comes into play, especially for your small business owners that are trying to keep up with all these constant changes um, of ways of payment, ways of selling. That is a big deal. So Representative Matthews, let me jump in because now you are speaking directly to me and I'm sure there are many people watching in my situation. Small business owner, my fledgling, growing new media company. So how would my small business benefit from that uh, tax break that you just mentioned? And how would I, what would I need to do to apply for it, if you know? Um, I don't know how you're going to apply for it just yet. Um, I haven't had a chance to dig that far into the okay. bill, but um, I'm assuming there will, of course, be a department set up, as normally is a cabinet for that, right. that you would go through and apply for these tax credits and, you know, itemize your expenses and what they were for. And of course, you would qualify as a small business, things like that. That is typically how these things work. And I'm excited that um, small businesses, small businesses will get an opportunity to grow without penalty in other areas. Great. great. Oh, yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, Increased funding for the IRS. I mean, we keep hearing them talk about the IRS. First, they were attacking the FBI, <laughs> yeah. right? Because the little orange man got in trouble. And now they're all mad about the IRS getting money. Well, that money um, that is being used to give to the IRS for increased funding. First of all, let me say this, Gina. The IRS is already understaffed and underpaid. Um for me, I feel like them being mad about the IRS getting more money as far as their workers, I feel like they just love keeping people working for less money. <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if regular America really talks to people who work for the IRS. Of course, there are people at the top who make an absorbent amount of money, but those people in that call center that y'all are calling and getting smart weight and cussing out and hanging up on. <laughs> They don't, they're making regular money. I just want everybody to understand they're making regular money. So the bill does provide 80 billion in additional funding. Who knew we had 80 billion? Ooh, wow. Those numbers make, listen, I am concerned about our spending. Um, while I, while I think this is great, I am very concerned. Um, 80 billion in additional funding for the IRS, but it is not for um, taxing working families and small businesses. This funding is specifically set out to hire people to track and keep track of those businesses that make over the $400,000 a year to make sure that they're paying their fair share of taxes. So when the See billionaires are paying more money uh, because now this 
part of that bill. I don't want to like steal your line, but you, you got these billion dollar companies that, that mm -hmm. are like taking home a billion dollars or more and not pay, mm -hmm. and paying zero in taxes. So there's the 15 percent, basically all those businesses, they will at least have to pay 15 percent. So that's how they're going to get some of that 80 million back, I think. Right. Right. So exactly. So I'm, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that. OK, my <laughs> slow bad. down. You take <laughs> my bad. So um, so some of that money will be used to hire people to go for that, especially large corporations, like you just said, that use all these tax gimmicks and loopholes to not pay their fair share of taxes. Right. You shouldn't have to be rich to have access to loopholes that keep you from, you know, if we're going to pay, we're, we all need to pay, right? Yes. People are like, oh, well, they employ people. And yeah, okay, that's part of doing business. <laughs> they get a bonus for doing business? Like when? Since when? <laughs> also, again, part of that money is going to go into updating things that have been left out. I mean, again, when we hear the word IRS, I think we often think um, the people who are taking our money but the IRS is an employer, just like so many other factions. And I'm not saying I'm a fan of the IRS, because I definitely am not. I mean, I don't never get back no money. But <laughs> um, some of their equipment is old. Their computers are old. Their office stuff is old. I don't even remember anybody ever talking about updating IRS offices ever. So, you know, that is going to go into some of that as well, which it should. You know, I mean, we got some folks in the working class that are working there and, and we want them to have the same things that we're fighting for as, as regular citizens and they are regular citizens even though most people don't think of them um, as that. Next piece, um, it will make prescription drugs more affordable without hurting innovation. So it caps out-of-pocket drug costs for Medicare at $2,000 and it allows them to negotiate prices for 100 drugs that it selects. So a hundred specific drug that it selects. It also sets provisions that save the average Affordable Care Act enrollee $800 a year in the marketplace. Wow. That's a big deal. Um, when you talk about the cost of medical, I talk about this all the time. You know, my mom is retired and, you know, we found her cutting her blood pressure pills in half because they're expensive and she wanted to stretch it out. Um, I talked to one of my colleagues in the state house that was a doctor. And he told me if they're going to do that, they need to ask for the higher dosage. That way, if they're cutting it, they're still getting their proper dosage, but getting more out of it. That makes sense. Good point. Yes, um, it does. But the fact that you, a doctor that works with me in the state house has to even give me this information is crazy, right? Yes. But also, when we talk about hearing aids, you know, the cost for those is now capped as well. So, you know, it's a lot that came with that. And when we talk about the fact that, especially here in South Carolina, we're not doing good on the healthcare front. Everybody deserves healthcare, Gino. Yes. Everybody. Quality healthcare. So I'm excited about that. So Representative um, Matthews, if a part of that whole, when, it, when we talk about the healthcare savings, I believe uh, people who are elderly, uh, Medicare mm -hmm. patients, uh, my mom is, she falls in that category. Uh, mm -hmm. Those who are going to get, di who need medicine for their diabetes, it's, it was capped, it was capped at $35 at $2, a month? dollars for seniors. Okay. It's capped at $2,000 for seniors um, and, and, it, and ensures the um, premiums are affordable. Now, let me talk about seniors for a minute, because I did talk about that on the Clay Kane sh um, show earlier. And I just want everybody to understand a few things. You work your entire life. Do you understand me? Your entire life until you are, I mean, I feel like they want all the blood in your body before they want you to actually be able to sit down and enjoy life. Yes. So l let me go off on a tangent off of the end of <laughs> Please. Let me go off on a tangent for a second. <laughs> Social security is not taxed until, until you hit 25. If you're an individual and you make over 25,000 a year, then your social security is subject to be taxed, right? Now think about this. You paid into this system your entire life. Yes. And you pay taxes on that money that you made that went into the system. And then they're going to tax it again. If you make over $25,000 a year, 
Check this, Gino. Now, most senior people own their homes. According to statistics, okay. most of them own their houses, which means their monthly mortgage cost is a little bit lower, uh, uh, significantly lower. But think about it. If the average, um, the that's $2,000 a month at $25,000 a year. So that's on the high end, right? That's all you can make. That's the max. So a little over $2,000 and some change a month. So let's take out, I don't know, let's throw $1,000 for your housing expenses. Let's throw in your medical expenses. Because if you're older, you probably get, you're on something. You got to take something, blood pressure, something, something. Keep your blood flowing, your heart pumping. Yeah, right, Things, all that. Diabetes, everything, right? And then you're talking about food transportation you still have to buy gas if you drive you still got to pay car insurance if you have a car you still all of these other things are still expenses they don't ate that two thousand dollars up so my thing is okay well they can't make over twenty five thousand without being taxed but that is ridiculous because now we're saying oh we want you to work your entire life you can't sit down really because you can't afford to but then even if you could afford to sit down if that covered all of your expenses what are they enjoying because they don't have enough money left over to actually enjoy their older life. Nice. And a lot of them didn't come from wealth. So let's talk about that as well. When we talk about generational wealth, a question I'm skipping now, Gina, a question you asked me before was when I get there, what is one of the first things I want to do? I want to tackle credit scoring reform because that is the gateway to generational wealth, right? So when we talk about our elderly community in other cultures, other than mine, a lot of generational wealth is passed through death, right? When we talk about inheritance, mm -hmm. inheritance. And in our communities, it's not as prevalent. So when you think about having to work your entire life to draw social security, and then that not being very much, and then you having to get a supplemental job, and then we wonder why some of the jobs that are low paying that you used to be able to pay teens to do, are now being held by our elderly community. Yes. Do you see how this domino effect just keeps setting yes. us up for failure? Yes. And over time, it has done exactly that. And I asked somebody one time that was from another country, what was the thing that bugs you the most? And they said, the way y'all treat y'all elderly, y'all leave them alone to die. Not literally, of course. They're not saying we walk away and leave them in a corner, but they're saying they work and work and work and work. And at no point, are they able to sit down, especially if they don't come from an affluent family or receive something from some inheritance? Yes. And then the inheritance that you receive, you, you know, being able to have good credit, being able to determine the length of time things stay on our score, being able to have a nonprofit credit bureau agency. The three we have right now are for profit. Yes. When we talk about all of those things, we're talking about being able to pass down land, houses, cars, all of those things are important. Your insurance, the amount of health insurance, they're basing all that on credit scores. Credit scores should be only restricted to credit decisions, not everything under the sun. And so anyway, I'm going to get off my little tangent. No, I'm glad but you when did. we talk about <laughs> our elderly community, we have to start paying attention because you can't work your entire life for Social Security and then the Republicans want to slice Social Security? Are you kidding me? Well, so you, I, I don't want, I don't want, I, don't, I hate when old people that don't want to work but have to work to supplement have to wait on me at a restaurant. It feels wrong because I feel like I should be serving them. My mom is your amen corner. She's watching me, watching us live right now. So she, she, Amen, she, Mama, Mama she, Jones. She's agreeing with everything you're saying because I've witnessed it up close and personal with her. I mean, they don't provide her with enough money to do anything that, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to, you know, you know, I've been in a position, you're doing my best uh, that I can to, to help her. So uh, mm -hmm. you were, and I know there are many, there are millions of people uh, like me who are in that situation they have an elderly parent or both parents and yeah you know. and thank God you're there because there are some folks who don't who don't have a relationship with their children or or grandkids and and they're out here working and of course y'all of course I had two grandfathers who could never sit they tail still I understand there's always gonna be some that just won't sit they tail still <laughs> but I but working should be an option right yes. it shouldn't be a necessity yes. when you get I mean 
65, 66, 70, 75, 80. I mean, come on. I'm, when? I'm We're working from, uh, from life to death. Really? I mean, it's. I think my first, my first job, I was, I was in eighth I grade, was 14. actually. Yeah, I was, okay. say, I was 14. So, so we're around the same age. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're around and the same now, age. And now, I mean, paper routes, waiting tables, that, those used to be teenage jobs. Yeah. Um, you know, fast food, restaurants. And now, those are me. People are holding on to those for dear life. I notice it more. Look how we've changed as a society. Every time that, I go to that. a supermarket, I notice more and more elderly people. Usually, it's teenagers, but now it's it may be more elderly people working in these supermarkets than it is teenagers. So you're and right. let me tell you about the disrespectful folks that come through those supermarkets and don't have the patience to <laughs> deal with their elders because they haven't been taught that. Because now we've walked away from the respect we used to have for our elders. And so now when they're in line and they get tired and run out of patience, they'll talk or act any kind of way because it took them a little longer to figure out the keys on the cash register or, you know, Again, our society is is going to hell in a handbasket. We've got to do something to turn it around. The last thing I want to point out about the induction uh, Inflation Reduction Act um, is that it will not raise gas prices, but will move us toward energy independence because it is giving us incentives on. Um, it will give us incentives to include ten years of tax credits to make modifications like heat pumps and rooftop solar more affordable and provide $4,000 um, in customer tax credits for lower and middle income individuals to buy used electric vehicles. Yes. Um, and we have been saying as a country that we need to be energy independent for since I, I mean, since I was in school ever, <laughs> in ever. first grade, kindergarten. <laughs> Forever, ever, Forever, <laughs> right? ever, so ever, is, ever. This is not a new notion. And, and, you know, and so when you hear people say, oh, well, I thought, I thought we weren't in inflation and I thought we weren't this. You damn well can see where we are. Stop acting blind. When you go to the store, you know we in it, we got inflation going on. That is based on need, quality of supply and demand, right? And I and I don't know if I explained this before. And if I did, please stop me. That's okay. But when prices come down and people have more money. And we had the tax rate down, and and I wish people would stop saying Biden lowered the, uh, the <laughs> he changing the taxes because he doesn't do that. <laughs> That's not his job. I just want you to Google what the president's job is and what he can do. I just want you to do that. I'm not even going to tell you right now. I'm going to make you go look that up. So that is not his role. But when they came down and everything like that, it what it did was people were able to get a lot of things at one time. And so it sucked up all of the backstock we had for the demand, right? And so when you talk about demand and supply and demand, all of that backstock is gone. So in order to level the playing field, they've got to slowly increase interest rates and costs so that people want to buy less. I don't care whether you're talking about houses, groceries, cars, clothes, shoes, whatever it is, whatever good it is. They've got to do that so that they can build back up the backside. And then uh, this is, if this happens over centuries, time and time again, even when you don't notice it. So you point it out. See, look, it happened. See, look, it happened during Biden. Don't be an idiot. It happens all the time. Cut it out. I just want people to stop it and have a little bit of common sense and critical thinking skills. So, I am excited about this in the <laughs> Inflation Reduction Act. I am too. I hope that you all are too. I hope you enjoyed my explanation of it. I tried to simplify it as much as I can. And as Joe Madison always says, I tried to put it where it goes. Put it where, he, he, Joe Madison and my grandfather. I forgot. My grandfather used to, and it hit me some not too long ago. I said, wait a minute. I've been hearing Joe Madison. Where did I hear that from? I heard it from Conway Jones when I was a little boy way back in the 70s. Nice. So I, I digress. Well, so but listen, before I let you go, I uh, before, before I let you go, oh, man, it, there's so many things um, I want to cover. So I'll just basically let you speak to because I'm thinking about the legislation that 
could have been passed. So for those who are out there saying, well, you know, because we ain't got reparations, I ain't going to vote. Oh, because they didn't pay the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act or the John Lewis, the Voting Rights Bill or the Women's Health Protection Act. They didn't pass that, so I'm not going to vote. Instead of worrying about what you didn't get, worry about what you're going to lose if you don't elect people like Miss Matthews to the Senate. Child, yes. For those people <laughs> talking about they're not going to vote because they get what they wanted. Honey, none of us got what we wanted. I'm a full woman with a vagina. I want all these protections as well. But you have to vote for somebody who wants them as well in order to get them. And I keep saying black people have to stop withdrawing or any, you know what, not just us, any people. How about that? All people. Stop withdrawing when you don't like something, because when you do that, you leave it open, you leave those decisions to somebody who does not have your best interest at heart. Boycotting had its time and place. And boycotting is fine and well when we're talking about buying of goods and services. But when we're talking about positions, boycotting just won't work. We have got to get in there and take those positions. If you see somebody unqualified that works with you and they just got promoted to manager and you know they got to come to you to get the answer, seem to me that you should have stepped up and said, uh-uh, I'm more qualified than them. <laughs> no, I, I want to go for it too. Well, let us both interview then. Because why would you let them have it and then complain about them? You can't make changes from that angle. Just put it where the girls can get it. I couldn't, listen, that's a mic drop right there, but like the sister said, so... You want the Women's uh, Health Protection Act passed so abortion will be legal in all 50 states and you, the 10 year old chill babies won't be forced to have a baby by a person that raped, raped her. Or if you want the Voting Rights Act passed, if you mm -hmm. want uh, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, if you want moms and pa not just moms, dads, parents, uh, pre K, universal pre K. Uh, child care, all these moms who had to leave the workplace, they want to go back to work. We'll help them out. I know. I, I don't need also to... single fathers too, mm -hmm. Gino. Let me yeah. give a shout out to all my awesome single fathers out there. I know some that are 10 toes down for theirs. That's why I, I like to say single parents. Yes. Um, yeah. That has now been a new thing, you know. And so, again, with change comes change. Anyway, I got to run, but follow me at MatthewsForSenate.com. Oh, look at there. I got my finger right there. There you Matthews go. Senate.com And donate to my campaign. Sign up to volunteer. I don't care what corner you are in. We need to make sure people everywhere understand that they have to register at least 30 days before November 8th. And then they need to come out and vote. And it needs to be done this year because we can't wait. Our democracy doesn't have time. Our house is on fire, Gino. We got to put the fire out. And or for, we're gonna burn to and, death. And for those who are watching saying, well, how's she gonna win and she can't this and that. Listen, you can do what you wanna do when you wanna do it bad enough. She absolutely can win and will win. The question is, how bad do you want her to win? Are you willing to put in the work to donate the money, to volunteer, to knock on doors, to take 25 people with you, that party bus you were gonna use? to go ahead and pop bottles and have fun, rent uh -huh. that party bus and use it to take people to the polls and go vote. Uh, let me get off my soapbox. I know you got to run. Representative Matthews, love and respect. You know you got a home here permanently. So we'll be looking forward to you when you've got some time, when you've got some, something else that you want. And definitely uh, the, when you get ready, when someone else uh, has the courage to debate you, let us know so you can come back on the show ahead of time because you have agreed to debate your opponent. Crickets? I have. Crickets. I, I haven't heard anything from his camp, so, you know, I'm ready. I'm, I, I'm ready to do it. Let's do it. Representative Crystal Matthews, thank you, my friend. We'll thank see. you. Have a great night. You too. You and the family. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for letting me be a part of your life. As always, God bless each and every one of you. God, most of all, Thank you for letting me do the Gino Jones Show. I come to you live Monday through Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 p.m. in Chicago, 3.30 p.m. on the West Coast. Shout out to everybody watching me uh, watching me live and the conversation in my live chat room. Hello to my number one fan and uh, my executive producer. I call her my mother, Mary Dixon. I love you more than life itself. Shout out to Mr. Markel Bailey, the official barber, 
and hairstylist for the Gino Jones Show. You can check him out on Instagram, Kale B. Cutting Up, K-E-L-B-E-C-U-T-T-I-N-U-P. The wardrobe consultant, the drip director is one Allie Jones. You can check her out on Instagram, L as in Lexi, X is in extra dot N like Nancy, C is Charlie, L is in Larry, LX dot NCL underscore. Right. The next live version is going to be tomorrow, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. I guess tomorrow is going to be another South Carolina state representative. He is uh, running for re-election this year, uh, and he's got an incredible project. We're going to talk about uh, something called Project Cool Breeze. He's been doing this for about two decades. So uh, elderly people, uh, seniors on a fixed income, you, you can imagine the heat in South Carolina in the summertime is unbearable. And you had so many seniors who didn't have any kind of air conditioning, not even a fan. And unfortunately, we lost some seniors uh, from just heat exhaustion in their homes, died in their homes because they didn't have an air conditioner or fan. So for about two decades, he has been giving away um, fans and air conditioners to needy seniors and elderly on fixed income. So he's going to talk about that program. And he's got another giveaway coming up very soon. So he will be my guest tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I love each and every one of you. And I leave you with these words. As always, be blessed. Pray for peace. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and tune in to the next episode of the Gino Jones Show, exclusively right here on YouTube.